yourself first, right? <laughs> um, I'm Gary Buck. I'm the West Regional Harassic Territory now. Territory Manager, uh, the West Territory Manager for Aura Fall. Um, so I handle and like, cover responsibilities for 13 states. Here. See, don't be afraid, I don't bite. Not on the first time. Here he does bite, actually. So I guess logistics, what the plan is, we're going to do the classroom here this morning, um, and then we'll go over to Fisher Fulfillment, which is a, another company um, sort of aligned with, with regional, uh, where we've got the cars, and we'll spend then the rest of today, and then all of tomorrow on the vehicles. Um, so this is this is not so much I mean it's classroom but we want to make this as open to you guys to gather the information that you need so don't hesitate about asking questions today uh, you're here you guys have committed this time and and the financial resources to be here so please don't hesitate to ask questions are my experiences that uh, first off we always know there's no dumb questions and secondly when you ask one there was, I guarantee you, someone in the room was thinking the same thing and wanted to know that same answer. So, so don't hesitate on that stuff. We want to make it just casual, open. Cell phones, uh, no problem. Uh, if you can put it on mute, if you need to make a call or get a call, just excuse yourself from the class. Um, sorry that you'll miss all that important information while you're gone, but you know, Mr. Wade Davis, who is our lead instructor. Um, and he is not an Orfall employee, but has his own company, um, a wrapping business uh, in uh, Pompano Beach, Florida. He will be the biggest offender, so you won't you won't you won't offend it uh, any money as much as much as Wade will, because he's still trying to run his company up here in Salt Lake City during the next two days. Um, bathrooms are down this hallway, and then take a right at that first hallway, and it's all the way down on the left. Uh, that would be the men's, and then right a couple doors before that is the women's. Um, we're going to get you directions for the other facility. We'll print those out and have them to you before we leave at lunchtime. Um, I want to personally thank Regional Supply for hosting this class. Um, I've got a very special relationship with them uh, just in the five years that I've been out here on the West Coast doing business, so I always, always like coming in and helping them and as well as educating you guys, their customers, on uh, what's happening with the waterfall and obviously doing the vehicle wrap classes. Um, anything else I'm forgetting as far as logistics stuff? We'll have lunch brought in 11:30. So we'll about 11:30, I think. 11:30. So we'll do. We'll sort of finish up this part. Um, do lunch and then we'll, you know, we'll go over there. It's only 10, 15 minutes away. So no problem. One thing. You're also saying yeah. about, you know, they have to step out and miss anything. We are filming this whole first session, so when it's all done next week, it'll, we'll have it on our YouTube channel. Um, so you, if you want to look up to review anything, all the information will have that available. Great. That's uh, the first time we filmed the whole class, isn't it? Yeah. So make sure your hair is combed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to film the, like, the, like the little bit parts of uh, installing the vehicle wraps? Oh, yeah, we'll do a lot in there, too. Great. Yeah. Good. So will you get paid for being on this? <laughs> no, but you have to yes. sign, You'll have to yeah, sign yeah, a release uh, form. I don't say how much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be a dollar. Stand in front of the camera. <laughs> Advertisement. could be a dollar. <laughs> Actually, yeah. too, I've got a little extra benefit for you guys today, too, um, at the ISA show. Um, you know, with the software, uh, Pro Vehicle Outline is probably the, the dominant one out there. Maybe you guys have heard of Bad Raps, yeah. and it's gone through some transition and stuff like that. So there's a new owner of Bad Raps. Talk to him at the ISA show. <coughs> He's actually coming up today, okay. and around 11.30, uh, we're going to have a little extra sort of demo on the Bad Raps thing. It's, it's as much for you guys as it is for Wade Knight to sort of get familiar with what is the new company, the owners, the mission, um, but it's interesting too from what I've learned, you know, they've created fills and they sort of combo stuff together where, you know, where you buy Aurora graphics and you'll buy Pro Vehicle Outline to use for the outline and then, but they are actually offering both where you can buy fills and, and the outline. 
but you know, I'll let him talk about it when he gets here. But I thought it would be good for him to see the class as well as, you know, for you guys to get exposure to it, and as well as for Wade and I to understand, because we've sort of been pretty pro pro vehicle outline, to be honest with you. But bad reps have sort of gone through some stuff. If you guys have used it, you probably know the situation in their updates and things like that. When through the what three or four owners it's had in the last five or six years, so. So that'll be good. Well, at least you'll be aware of what's out there and what's available to you and, and have a little bit of better understanding of everything. We don't get too much involved in the design aspect of stuff uh, because this is really about the installation point of it. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to give you guys some exposure to that. So that's a little extra thing that we'll have today. Uh, and then actually Pro Vehicle Outline is, does support our class, so Wade's got some, some things there that he'll talk about as well. Um, the other thing I want to mention is sort of too, um, our class was designed by Craig Campbell, and Craig has actually written a book. Um, and as you go through the class afterwards, this is not to promote it, I'm just making you aware, uh, that Craig is now our market manager for our graphic product. So he handles everything in new product development and establishing everything to do with the graphic side of stuff, including the vehicle wrap materials. But, very good pictorials, a lot of pictures, and it, as you see, if you get this, if you want it, let me know. Um, it actually goes through, it's pretty much just like the class is going to be. It's structured like that, and he wrote the book sort of that way. So if you're interested in this, let me know afterwards, and we can work out something to try and get you a copy. Um, we'll go over this later, but actually the whole sweet design stuff for the bad rep stuff as well. Um, okay, so materials. Uh, we actually gave you let me think now correctly I should say 712 it does okay so those of you have this one there I think there's only one or two that has the new one but this is actually two versions old just so you know so I think there was two people that had the new ones so you guys won't have what's in this um, are you with are you separate everybody's you stands but are you separate here? Is there anyone else from no, IG I'm by Sun? Are, is any of you guys together? No, I'm by myself. You're by yourself. Is anyone of you guys, would you guys mind if I gave one to him? Fine. To change, to trade, so just so you guys, because you guys have from the same. <coughs> so he's got one. What, what do they need out of those? Okay. So this is the new one here. That's the new one. This is the new one. Yeah. And the reason that we gave this, this is interesting, is at that point in time, we actually put the 970 RA in this color chart. So we've actually saved some of these for the wrap classes that you can see we're sort of running out. So in that gray tab area on that where it says restyling films, you actually have the color selection chart for the solid color wrap material as well as the selection of the, um, it's not in the new one. It's not in the new one, so don't be looking. Hey Gary, do you want me to see if I can find slash next for those? Oh, we have them. We don't have worry. Them. Don't worry. You good? Okay. So this is one reference point for you for the textured films, the 975, and then the 970 RA, the colored films. All right? Now, also in your bags, to support that, you will have a colored deck of the 970 RA. We have 96 colors, as well as a colored deck for the... Um, 975 texture films, okay? Yeah. But that's why we're giving out the old color charts. This is, you know, I want to explain it up front in case somebody says, hey, that's a, you know, there's been three other color charts since then. Yeah, one of these is extra. So you're saying the old one has more stuff in it than the new one does? No, what was, if you notice in the new one that you have, where that same tab area is, we went back to doing what we needed to do. Pull that up. Hold this up and see what we put in. Okay. So what's in the new ones, and if you need a new color chart, you can get those from regional, is where the restyling films were is now the reflective product line. Because we bought or, uh, we bought Reflexite, and then that was where that transition happened in actually at the end of 2012, 2013. So that's, so we thought these for you guys in the wrap class, the older color charts having that selection guide in there would be a little bit more better uh, for you guys to have as a reference point along with the color guides. So, that's for that. Um, okay, 
So I'm going to go through a little bit this morning. We're going to talk about some basic stuff. Yes, I'm a salesman, but I don't want this to be an Orfall sales pitch. We're going to give you some just definition stuff. You have some understanding. And of course, 3M, Avery, us, MacTech, uh, Arlon, everyone that's out there, we all do things and manufacture a little bit differently. So I want to give you sort of our perspective so you understand what's really happening with Orifal because there's a lot going on. It's very, very exciting right now. It has been, to be honest with you, 10 years in August, I'll, I'll be with this company and every year it's been exciting but this just keeps ramping up more. So I get a little excited, I apologize, I'm a very passionate person, but if I get off track, just say enough. I got a question, what's, up? what's the difference between Orifal and Orifal? Is Orifal in the wrapping? Nope, that's what I'm going to explain to you. Okay. okay. This is just a quick overview of what we're going to cover in the in the classroom here this morning. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about what this gentleman here just brought up. He's very observant. Uh, we're going to talk about what we think some things that we do in manufacturing and why we our product will outperform. We'll talk about calendar and cast choosing the right material, not only for vehicle wrap applications, but any of your digital applications. And then we'll get into make wrapping your business. That's where Wade will take over and we'll get into those details. And here's the thing. Remember I talked about interactive, ask the questions. This guy is you, he runs a company, he runs a business, he, there's a learning curve with everything. Let's flatten out that learning curve for you in the next two days as much as we can and take and sponge off this guy as much information as you can, okay? He doesn't mind it, he loves the questions, but that's the opportunity. If I want, I'm not doing you guys justice if I don't say it multiple times. The other thing that we'll say multiple times we'll get into in that section, but this is the big factor of why we have him. We don't want an Orifal employee sitting up and going, oh, Orifal's great all the time. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I put on a skirt and I dance around. Okay? <laughs> Look at you. All right, so go ahead, wait. Click over. It's, it's just a tab at the bottom there in the left. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, Orifal, Orical, that's the big thing now going on. People are like, what do we call you? I'm like, just call us either one, but don't call us anything nasty. Um, we are the, we, we're now all part of Orifal. Europe, you know, that GMBH basically stands as we, we listed in the United States as corporation. Um, we purchased a company called Reflexite, which was a big competitor and uh, manufacturer of products, not a competitor of us, but to the to them, you know what I'm talking about. Who? I'll, be not, I'll be nice. <laughs> um, in the reflective world of things, they make the striping that goes on the outside to turn out here for firefighters, right? They make the reflective signage for the sheeting for the overhead signs on the interstates. Uh, in the work zones, all that orange that you see on the cones and the striping, that's what their specific product line was. So when we bought them, the whole mission was then to say, let's create some global identity. We were known as Oracal USA, and we were just sort of a partially owned division of Orifal before that. So now that everything's, we went from basically two or three, three manufacturing sites globally to now we have 19. So we've become a global company now, right? And that was where we had to create some uh, one name for that company to give us the identification internationally. So that's why we went with the parent companies, Orifol, O-R-A, obviously stands for Oracal, F-O-L, FOL, or FOIL, is, uh, is the German interpretation, and those two together created Orifol originally in the beginning. So in 2008, we built about 250,000 square feet in Savannah, Georgia, just outside in what's called Black Creek, Georgia. Uh, that is the picture Wade has the cursor on right there in the middle. Um, so, and then a year later, we added 165,000 more square feet. So we got about 415, 420,000 square feet at that facility in Georgia. 94% of the materials that are sold in the United States are made in that factory there. The only thing that we don't manufacture there is some of the reflective stuff that we still do in Germany. And then where he's got the cursor now is the Avon, Connecticut facility. Uh, they had two facilities in Connecticut. We combined them and condensed them into one now in Avon. 
for all of what we call the Reflexide product line of products. Uh, and then at the bottom is Germany, that's the, the mothership. There's 2.1 million square feet of manufacturing there, but that basically now just supports the whole global entity um, other than North and South America, which we do all the manufacturing, like I said, in, in that Savannah facility. So that's a little bit. Does that answer your question about why it's Orifal now? Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, so as you can see, the mission, the perspective of everything in the bottom left-hand corner, we have full global distribution to 80-plus countries around the world, and our intent is to be the number one manufacturer of pressure-sensitive adhesive films, uh, plotter, graphic products, as well as reflective materials. We're on a 10-year mission, if you will, um, with a goal setting. Uh, we've been into it now for almost three years, and we're probably running at where we thought we'd be at the four-year mark. So we're almost a year ahead of our, of our plan, uh, of our schedule. So things that's referencing to the fact that everything's pretty exciting right now with Orfall and that we're getting receptive, uh, the reception in the market that we thought we were hoping to have, uh, but we're getting a little bit sooner, so it's pretty exciting. So, oh wait, just before you go away, just on the top there, the key thing with this company, why I love working for them, is we don't make post-it notes, we don't make scrub pads, we don't make anything else, but material, mostly PVC, 99% PVC, with adhesive on the back. That's all we do. And we're privately owned. So everything that we do and the profit dollars that we make, we turn back into the company. One of those investments is basically, you can see, we're all robotic now. So after that material is coated, the adhesive is put on, the liner is put on, and it goes to the converting area, when that forklift driver drops a 2,500 meter length roll, 60 inches wide, 60, actually 64 inches wide. When he drops it in the converting system, that product is not touched by human hands until you guys, the customer, open the box. Okay? So, it's slit, it's rolled down to 50 yard rolls, those are taped automatically. They're put into a bag automatically. You know when you open our product, you have that bag in there and you have that little yellow sticker. The sticker's put on and it's picked up by two arms. Or no, sorry, before that, to the end caps get slapped on by robotics. It's picked up, put in the box. The box is then sealed. And what you're seeing is at the end of the line, they pick up two, two rolls at a time, stack them vertically on the pallet, shrink wrap the pallet automatically, and then it comes out the cage ready to go for warehousing. So that's the key thing, is you don't have the human being factor involved in that, so it's all automated, it's all robotic now. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, which is really cool, because then we don't have people putting fingerprints on your product and when you get it in. <laughs> it shows up after you print it. The go ahead. still land on it, though. Yeah, we get this. <laughs> we're not going to be perfect. You know, some of the bugs still get in there and some of the dirt gets on there, but we're working everything as best we can. So that sort of leads in of why we believe our product outperforms. You can see some of the manufacturing on the left-hand photos on the bottom and in the middle. Basically, those coating lines are about the length of a football field, and they're double-decker. Of course, they gotta go through the ovens at the top and where they're heated, but basically three guys operate that, that process with quality control and monitoring and all that. So it's all computer controlled, it's all very, very technical. So that would be the lower bubble, that newest technology in casting and coating lines in the industry. What we have, because it's all new, and like I said, we just built it in 2008, um, you basically have the 100% com computer controlled manufacturing now, You've got, and all that is a result of the proprietary machinery and the processes, the way we design things to work to manufacture this consistent product. We can get closer from batch to batch of any of making a product than any other manufacturer. Their, their product and their machinery is, is 25 to 30 years old. We're talking about stuff that's only seven years old here. So we're just, we're going to be more efficient. You guys looked at us probably in the beginning, at the beginning if you bought from us five years ago, two years ago, whatever, you looked at it and said, oh, well, that's a pretty good price. You know, I'll give it a shot. 
Well, that we the reason that price is there is because of all this. We don't sacrifice anything in the product quality, in buying the adhesives, in buying the paper. It's all high quality stuff. The efficiency of our operation gives us the ability to keep that price to you guys at that. So actually we had a price increase, I'll be honest, in January. It was the first time we had a price increase in three years. That just makes it better for you guys. As long as we keep doing this, we'll be okay. The biggest effect that this affects you personally, not only by the price, is that bottom right bubble. We are the only manufacturer that will guarantee you that every time you open a roll, you're going to have a 50-yard piece in there. You're not going to, never going to have a splice from us. And if you do, I want you to call us. You call regional, or you get in touch with me. I'll give you my business cards because that doesn't happen with us. Now, well, what is it again? Splice-free guarantee. Now, well, what I mean, what is that? I mean. That you're going to have one continuous piece one on that roll. Drive. Yeah. Oh, so other companies don't do that? No. We Anybody have an experience with a splice before? There you go. So what, they infuse the, the vinyl together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just tape the mine together. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. So I, I was running things through my plotter and then it gets jammed because it like rips apart and stuff like that. And I oh. wasted all that vinyl and I had to start over. Was it on digitally printed media? Or was it just like a... Uh, no, just a... What? Well, I guess. Just, I don't know, just a moment. Well, you time. had it, it sounds like, with a plotter film, yeah. right? Cut vinyl. Yeah. But, oh yeah, it's, they have it in digital material as well. Huh, okay. Well, I never... I mean, granted, I, I probably use 90% of your product, but I never came across any of that before, so... What? Do our competitors have splices in their digital roles? Yeah. Good. You'll see it, it, when it as soon as you pull it out of the box, there'll be a red tab sticking up uh, in the top on both sides. Right. And that's that's an indication there's a splice there. Uh -huh. And a lot of times people miss that, right? So they load the stuff up, they're printing, okay, I can go and do something else while I'm printing. Also, they come back, they got, you know, materials clogged and all that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I, I let my printer go all night. There you go. And, and when I come back, it's fine. There you go. <laughs> It's a good point, but thank you for your experience and your experience because I figured if someone is doing some stuff, they've had the experiences with their competitor. And again, what's really cool about it, I, I, and you know, we have humans involved. We did before we went to all automatic. So I had four instances in the 10 years where there was a spike. So as soon as I saw the sample when they sent me the digital pics, I knew exactly what happened, where it happened, and it was, of course, where we had the human beings involved. But it was really cool. I, when I started with them, I thought it was, oh, yeah, it's a marketing thing, right? No. Within two weeks of those experiences, that customer had a check for $500. We resupplied his inks. We re gave him a new roll of material and a new roll of laminate. So we don't mess around. And I was, I have to be honest, I was shocked. You know, I was like, wow, he calls me up. He's all excited. I got a check. I got this. I got this. I'm like, all I can say is Merry Christmas. You know? <laughs> So we stand behind the product, which is, you know, like I said, when I, you know, we're all skeptics sometime in life, and I was a little skeptical. I thought, okay, it's a marketing deal, but I'm working for the company, they're paying me. I'm going to go out and, you know, tell people. But boy, they stood up to it. So, yeah, it's very interesting. We can tell almost instantly just by the pictures where the situation occurred, if it does occur. I haven't actually had one for about four years now. But anyway. Just another benefit of the whole computer controlled sort of advanced technology in the manufacturing. So how we make the media, and this is sort of getting into choosing the right material for the job. If you noticed in the digital media guide that we've got, you don't have to open it up now, but when you get a point, you can see how it's broken down between cast, and then we have ultra calendar section, and then we have the calendar. Right? So this all used to be on one page in our digital media guide. Now you've got like three or four pages worth of stuff. That's how many materials we're adding. The reason I'm pointing that out is we're engineering materials. We're engineering materials for specific applications. Do you have to carry 20, 20 materials a product? No. You know, we can cross over and we can help you out. The guys at regional are very well educated. But there's usually four or five that will cover most everything. Unless you get that real specific deal like, oh, we got, you know, we've got to put a, a graphic up on a brick wall. 
All right, well, yeah, you got to buy 39.54 then. It's not like the other materials are going to cover that and have that durability, right? But, you know, for general signage, uh, for vehicle wraps, for higher end graphics type of stuff, you know, you could probably get a buy, you know, with four or five different products. The reason being behind that is we know that those materials are going to work for that application. We've engineered the adhesive. The, the PVC, the liner, you know, is it a water-based adhesive? Is it a solvent-based adhesive? All those things are put into the play, are put into play of how we engineer that product for that application. So, again, a little bit of preface on stuff so you can understand where we're coming from. This is how we make products. We make a kit, we, the face film can either be cast calendar or ultra calendar. Ultra calendar is new. We're not going to try to change the industry and all that. You still have ultra calendar is still a calendar product. But some of those things that I was talking about, the automation and the, and the technological advances that we've made, we're at, actually able to take a calendar product and do some things to it, treating it within the you know proprietary treatment within the plant that makes that product act like cast or get very close to cast performance as far as durability or conformability, whatever it might be. One of those products is 3551RA. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But if you're doing box trucks or trailers or step vans, you don't need to spend six, seven hundred dollars a roll for media when you can spend three fifty or four hundred for 3551RA for a straight side application. And the reason I mentioned 3551RA is because we're that's the only product, you all know, don't put cast laminate on, on a calendar media and don't put a calendar laminate on a cast media. Yeah, this is where that breaks the rules, the one instance. 3551RA is so close to cast that we actually want you to use the cast laminate on top of it, which is the 290. Or the 293. 290 is a 2 mil, 293 is a 1 mil. Okay? So at 2.75 mil media, which 3551RA is, and I add a 1 mil lamb, now I'm at 3.75. If you guys have wrapped before, you guys probably are all comfortable with grabbing a piece of material and going, there it is. That's and it's all around 4 mil, right? 2 mil either cast, 2 mil lamb, 2 mil media. So now with the 1 mil and the 2.75, you get the 3.75, we're not shaking you guys up too much. You know, we're not getting you guys nervous because oh it's too thick or it's too thin. Right? So that's that's a perfect example of ultra calendar. Again, we make adhesives, water-based, or solvent-based adhesives. Solvent-based would be something like that's on 3651 if you use that product. It's going to have a bigger initial bite, right? But we're talking about a permanent outdoor signage, so we need that permanent adhesive, and we're going to need that initial high tack level with it. Whereas a water-based adhesive would be something like 3164 if you tried that, or 3640. You know, and those are water-based, so less durability outdoors, less, a little bit less initial tack, still a permanent adhesive though, right? So I know I'm going to get the life out. I'll get four years out of that probably then versus six of the other one. So again, if you need an outdoor sign that's only going to be up for three years, two or three years, use a water-based adhesive. Just make sure it's permanent. If you need something that's going to be out five or six years, use a solvent-based adhesive going to last longer. And then of course then the face stock and everything is engineered for those applications so it's going to last five to six years and the water-based one is going to last three or four, right? So the best way to do that, I don't want to get into it too much, but it can be complicated if you look at it. Excuse me, I'm fine. If you notice in these guides on all three of the pages, the rainbow, start with the rainbow. When that job comes in, where's it going? Right? And figure out where out of that rainbow it's going. So if it's an outdoor signage, I know that I'm in that pink column. And as confusing as this looks, as soon as I know I need an outdoor signage product, then don't worry about any of the other columns. Just worry about what's in the pink line, in the, or the pink column. Right? And then you can go through and say, okay, I need a five-year product. You can determine by durability or you can determine by the adhesive, right? Because I, I need a six-year product, I'm not going to put a removable adhesive on there. So you can sort of go down to all the pink dots and look over and say, 
okay, here's the durability of this product, here's the adhesive that's on it. Go ahead. So what's the advantage of the water basic? It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't last as long. It's not, you know, that's not an advantage, but it obviously doesn't last as long. So, but the easiest way for stuff that you have, whether it's from us or other manufacturers, when you go back to the shop, just peel back the corner of the material. 90, I would say 96% of the time, 95, 96% of the time, when you peel it back and you see white, that's a water-based adhesive. Because you're seeing through the clear, most water-based based adhesives are clear. All right, and if you peel back and you see a gray liner, that's usually a solvent-based adhesive. Again, rule of thumb, but not totally always going to happen that way. Because we brought out materials, we said, well, listen, people want to use a water-based adhesive, but they need the gray block out. Right, like major uh, uh, expo companies. Okay. They put six or seven layers of stuff on their graphics for the internal trade show signage, right? So they're like, well, we want to put six or seven layers on. We need a great block out, but we want it to be cheap. It's all indoor. So that's why we made up 3641, and we also made up 3164 XRA, and you'll see them in the list. Both of those are water-based adhesives, but, but are tinted gray. In the adhesive, so they can laminate them over the top of stuff and it'll block out. Those are the two that we have. There's other manufacturers that have other things. But like I said, 95, 96% of the time, if you pull back any roll you got in the shop and you see it's got a white liner, so probably a water based adhesive. You pull back on the corner and you see gray, it's probably a solvent based adhesive. I like to do it by smelling it because you pull back a water based adhesive and you put your nose to it, you can't smell too much. You pull that back on a solvent-based adhesive and put your nose to it, you can smell the solvent in there. So it's another way to define it. Okay. Um, so let's say we have like a 3651. We just got a few stickers to do, but uh -huh. we have some cast laminate mm -hmm. on the machine. I mean, is there a big disadvantage for using the cast laminate on that? I'm not going to endorse it, but I'm, but I'm going to be, you know, that's the... That's the official word, <laughs> but the, the street word in, in your shop, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. Because you're talking about stickers now. Right. Stickers. Now, if I was talking about a big partial graphic, you know, going on a wall type of stuff, and if it's going to be up for six years, yeah, then I'd have a problem because that, even that 36 for 50, 51 is going to want to, you know, contract over the point of time being a calendar film. Uh, whereas, you know, the cast will hold it to a bit, but again, getting four or six years down the road, you're, you're just not going to move at the same rate, right? So it's eventually pull. Probably won't delaminate from the from the laminate. Won't won't uh, delaminate, but it, the shrinkage might cause it to delaminate off the surface it's attached to. You know, I listen. The, if you want to make some quick notes, I always get into these things by asking four questions. And if you guys ask them to your customers, I mean, I'm asking them to you guys and to these guys. But if you ask them to your customers, you're helping solve your problem easy. So the first one is, nice and simple, is where's the product going? All we need an answer there, indoor or outdoor, but you'll get the story. Here it is, I got this, it's a single site sign, it's going on this, you know, whatever the story is, right? But all we're really looking for is indoor or outdoors. The second question I like to ask is, what are we sticking it to? Because in Orifall's world, all we make is adhesive back product, so it's got to be stuck to something. So are we putting it on a boat, we put it on a piece of aluminum, we put it on a wall, a concrete wall, brick wall, you know, is it going on MDO, is it, you know, so what are we sticking it to? And then the third question, and this is a great one for you guys to ask your customers, is how long do you want that to last? What is your expectation? You want it to last two years, three years, five years? That's a big question. That's, you should be asking that without my guidance and anyways, and I'm sure you probably are. But what is the customer's expectation of what he's buying from you? And then the last one I always ask is, are you going to laminate or not? And that's always a good question for you guys to be asking because that's an upsell question, right? Oh, no, no, I just need to last a couple years. Okay, fine. Then we put a removable adhesive on or we put a water-based adhesive and use one of those products. No, I need it to last six years. Yeah, no. No, I don't want to laminate. Really? Because do you know, Mr. Customer, that the inks are only warranted off my machine for three years? So I can't guarantee you that anything's going to happen after that. But if I laminate it with Orifalls 215, 
I can get you an extra three years. <coughs> and you'll see that in the guide. That's one of the great things in the back section of the book where the lamination is, is we actually extend the UV factor of the uh, OEM inks off the printers. Okay? So FYI, just so you know, if it's, if it's uh, latex or if it's solvent or if it's UV, uh, pretty much everybody warrants their inks for three-year life. You can extend that by the laminates from us, using that with the media and then using the OEM inks. And then the liner. See, the neat thing about Orfall, we don't buy anything made yet. Everything that we do in the composition of our products is all done in-house. We buy our own paper. We coat the paper. We siliconize the paper, right? We do all that right from the scratch. We make all the adhesive. We make the glue. We, all the components that you need to make adhesives with, we buy all those. We mix it together. We agitate it together and create our glue. That's why you have the consistency of our product from back to back. Nobody's sitting in the kitchen playing with the recipe on it, you know? No one's, we're not buying something in from somebody else that, uh, you know, it's sort of okay, we'll let it go because Orifal uses millions of material. No, we do everything in-house. And if you're ever near Savannah, Georgia, I hope in, if you want to get a whole different perspective of what you put in your hands and your printer and your plotter every day, go take a tour of our plant. And we, we're open to have anyone come in. It takes about an hour and a half, two hours. You will be amazed. That shot that I showed of the coating lines and all that, you, I literally, I wouldn't have a problem eating my lunch off the floor. It's absolutely amazing how clean the place is, how efficient it is, how organized it is in the warehouse and the inventory and the raw materials coming in. And then, of course, you know, the areas where we mix the glue and the adhesive together is, it's mind boggling. So I offer you, if you ever get near there, give me a call and let me know and I'll set up take an hour and a half, two hour tour of the plant. It's really, really cool. So, that creates the finished product. Go ahead, wait. All right, so here's a little bit about how, you, again, calendar and cast, we know the difference? No, yes. You know, there's Explain two. Explain to me. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. That's what I say, a lot of people don't know, and I'm more of just a street level guy, I don't get too technical. So if you want technical, that's why I got a technical support team. They can tell you exactly how all this stuff goes down. I always like keeping it basic and simple. That there is the difference, here's the quick difference. That's basically it right there in that upper right column. Calendar, calendar product comes from that process of all those heated rollers that, it, that is called the calendaring process of PVC. So we're starting with a solid in some form, right? It's already sort of created. We're taking it and we're squeezing it through these rollers with heat, pressing it down to the thickness at the bottom end of those rollers where it's going to usually be two and a half mil, three mil, you know, and four mil in that area. Cast, when we get to that next slide, you can actually do, because you're not creating it from anything, you're creating it from more of a liquid. You actually mix it for a cast. Right? You're mixing the PVC and the plasticizers and all that kind of stuff together, the pigmentation of whatever color it is. So you can actually, you sort of lay that out so you can get it thinner. So cast is always going to be a thinner material. Calendar will be thicker. General thumb rule. Very, it's like 99% of the time. Unless you want something cast that needs to be four mil thick or something. So the properties of calendar film, material is highly stressed has low dimensional stability which causes shrinkage over the course of time. We're stressing that PVC, we're forcing it through those rollers. It's less expensive to manufacture because we can do really long runs of it, right? Less flexible, flat applications only, monomeric formulations. Again, medium term <laughs> applications, real estate signs, construction signs, wayfinding signs, point and purchase graphics, stuff like that, okay? That's basically calendar film in a nutshell. It comes from some type of solid or semi-solid form. Good. All right, cast, you can see the difference. We mix everything together. We mix all the PVC, the stabilizers, the plasticizers, the color, so it comes out in more like a paste or, paste or a liquidy type of form where we're able to blade that or squeegee that to get the desired thickness, then we heat and form it. So it has no memory. When we create it, 
It is what it is then. So, more expensive to manufacture, obviously. Because we actually, actually have to create that. But it's much more flexible, much more conformable. Uh, we can do short run capabilities for custom colors. It has very high dimensional stability because of the stabilizers and the plasticizers that are in it. And the higher graded PVC that we can engineer into the product. So, long-term applications, vehicle wraps, long-term fleet graphics, corporate signage, anything you want to last longer. If you notice in the color chart, our 951 and our 751 plotter film, one is a 10-year film, one's an 8-year film. I don't think anyone in the industry offers that, to be honest with you. I think black and white in 951 is actually a 12-year product. Who's warranting 12 years? Okay. Again, those are the little things that make the difference in our product. So that's the difference between cast and calendar. And then, of course, like I said, the industry, we're, this is sort of an oral fall thing, so we're not going to recreate the industry. Ultra calendar is still calendar. Don't get off of that. I'm not trying to sell you something here or try to do the uh, snake oil system thing. All right? So it's cast like raw material base where we can do high-speed manufacturing in the calendaring process that gives us extra stability in the material, right? So it's similar to cast and flexibility, and then, of course, in the performance level. The best way I can describe that, in all honesty, Avery, 3M, Arlon, us, MacTech, you know what we are? We're just adhesive manufacturers. Right? And you make the glue. We just found a substrate to put it on that it works really well with. That's all it is. Well, we put ourselves a little bit above that level, or try to, on a daily basis, in that we engineer our glue to do two things. One, of course, is to stick to something. But the other thing that helps in the ultra calendar product specifically is that glue. We're creating and engineering it to maintain the integrity of the face stop that it goes on to, the face film. That's the difference between us and those other companies I just mentioned. It's a two sort of full purpose when we get to Ultra Calendar that we're engineering the glue and what it's supposed to do when it gets attached to that medium or that, that face film. So yeah, it's going to stick to something, but we're also giving it, like 651 is a great example. You all have used 651, our plotter film, right? How many problems do you have with 651? Not too many. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't, can't even tell you the last time I had a problem with 651. There's a perfect example that glue is engineered two ways. One, to stick to something and be permanent to it. Second thing is to maintain the integrity of the face stop for the face film 651. I see stuff out here, I live in Vegas. I see stuff in Vegas that's been up for six years. You don't see any glue lines, you don't see any contraction in that material. It's just, it's a fabulous product. You know, there's no other way to put it. I just don't have problems with that product because it's so, it's engineered so well and manufactured so well on a consistent basis day to day. And it's still a number one selling product, amazingly. How long does it take to put the glue to actually dry? So if it's on for 10 years? <laughs> you mean to sort of dry out? Yeah. Well, the warranty of the product is six years. Okay. So, but like I said, I've seen stuff down in Vegas that's up for six years. And if it's not baking out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, I would, listen, as for you guys, you're never going to warranty anything over four or five years to a customer, right? That's, we're not... Okay, let's make sure we're clear on that. But for you to go home and sleep at night and he bought 651 for that project, yeah, you know you could put your head on the pillow and you don't have too many worries. Right? The other thing you have to consider as well is the removal process. Well, that's something in too. So all of these adhesives are repositional, right. but they're permanent adhesives. Right. Okay? So they're not removable unless you buy a removable product. They become permanent after a certain period of time. In other words, you put them on year one, it's not so permanent. Year right. two, it gets a little bit more. And that's how it's thinking. It builds, it builds, it builds. You get to the fourth and fifth year, it's absolutely permanent. Right. So it's going to be hard to get off at that point. Now, after that, it's really going to start to break down. It's going to be really hard to get off. 
So that's kind of the thing you need to be thinking of. So for the car wraps, you tell the customer you might want to remove it after five years? I would say depending four. on your area, four to five years, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't go longer than four. I wouldn't either, but that's up to you. So you tell your yeah. customers that? Oh, he tells them, what, two? Uh, yeah, I'm two in Florida, four. so I'm three to four years in my mind. And they don't mind? Well, I have a formula that I kind of um, market to them and tell them how long it's going to last and when to expect to, to start failing. So I'll go. we're going to go through that when we get to this next part. I'll well, that's that. fine. Yeah, those are some of the things why so we have to be right here to the, to right. the selling of the job, basically. <coughs> yeah. yeah, I was just curious because, you know, for, for, of course, commercial versus, you know, the regular car wrap. Well, again, your your warranty or your longevity of the film is going to be more in consideration of what's off vertical. So any kind of a box truck, mm -hmm. you'll get the, the um, major amount of, of uh, you know, it, it'll last up to five to six years You're right, right. on vertical. But once you go four or five degrees off of vertical, that's when it's going to start to fail. Right? Yeah. So, you know, cars size will be fine, but then you get those fenders to start to roll over the hood, the hood, the top of the roof, that's all going to fail sooner than the rest of the car. Ah, okay. That's what you have to consider. Okay. So box trucks, commercial vehicles, certainly is going to go the length of the film warranty, which is five, six years. No problem, no problem on that. And you know, normally you use cast, right? On no, cast necessarily. Final? Uh, I mean, I feel like a vehicle wraps, like car wraps. Absolutely. You know, depending on which one it is. Yeah. But box trucks, something square or something flat like a door. Trailers, you know, uh, snowmobile trailers, used, motorcycle trailers. Used uh, 3551 RS. Or not cast, but the ultra calendar. calendar. We ultra calendar? We used the ultra calendar. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, well, okay, you, for instance, like walls. What do you normally use? Well, walls is the interior, so right. you would look in your. Did you go through the color charts period? Mm -hmm. the yeah, color yeah, chart. yeah, yeah. So you go through there, they have a specific product for walls. Yeah. Um, Depending on what you want. It would be overkill to use 3551 on walls interior. It's just, you're going to oh, spend yeah. more money. More money, yeah. Right, so you would use a 3165. 3169. 69. All right, 4 mil. Depends on, you know, again, are you going to laminate it? Interior. Are you talking about an interior wall now? Let's get down to the details of the four questions. How long do you want it to last for? You know, is it going to be up five or six years and there's going to be hands on it? Yeah, then we want to laminate because the hand printing oils is going to deteriorate the, the look. Okay. Right? So there's a lot of ways to go and, you know, because then I got 3268 or I got 3628 that you can use on the walls interior, which is a low tech removable. Okay, so, so in my business is, it's a startup. It's a uh, your refrigerator and door wraps, like those kind of doors right there. Mm -hmm. What do you normally use? Wood doors. Well, wood doors, metal doors, usually interiors. Well, I think the question, it's a great question. I think the question I would ask the customer is, does he care what it looks like after the wrap comes off? That'd be probably my first concern, mm -hmm. right? Now, if he's concerned about it and wants that to look like that wood door when he pulls it off, then I'd use a removable. I probably use 3169 RA. Um, 3169. Mm -hmm. If it was a metal door, you'd get away with even probably 3164 RA. Okay. But if he's not worried about how the door looks, you know, if I, again, this I'm sure is coated some way. They coated this wood, right, with some varnish or thing. Right, right, right. Right, if he doesn't worry that I pull some of that off, then I probably would use something like 3551 RA or... Well, that's what I've been using. It, yeah, yeah. But, again, solvent adhesive versus water-based adhesive. And how does he want the door to look? What is his intention for after he pulls the wrap, you know, the door wrap off? Or the, the refrigerators are no problem. No, that, that could be a problem. That's textured, right? A little bit textured. Yeah. But I, bit. I wrap so many, I mean, I wrap a lot of refrigerators. They look fine. Yeah. That's, yeah, I would say 3551 RA. Right? would want an adhesive that would pull down the texture. Yeah, 3551 RA would work. Yeah, I would actually, to be honest with you, I would, well, depends on where your level of wrap ability is. You know, the RA, for you guys that are probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about, that's our version of what, you know, for our air release or our air regress technology. It's called rapid air. That's what the RA stands for. 
and it's a, it's a technology that's in the liner that we emboss in the liner so when we pour the glue on this pattern, this micro pattern comes up when you pull the vinyl off the liner and it's basically a channel type, ours is more like a stochastic channel where when you squeeze it across the air is going to move through so you won't get bubbles so you get these nice clean insulation. That's what rapid air is, the air egress technology. But you shouldn't have to worry about that on a textured refrigerator. See, on a textured, I would just go with 3551. No RA. I wouldn't even use the RA. Really? Yeah. Well, it depends on your level of installing. Yeah, because that texture is going to allow you to move that air out. Yeah. So you don't need the RA, and it's cheaper. There you go. Just so you guys know, when okay. you see a product like 3551, we'll use this example, or 3951, our top of the line cast and it has the RA on it, and it has a version without RA, that RA is probably 20 to 25 percent more expensive. That's what it costs us to emboss the, the, the liner. So if you're using a textured material on a, this is a great discussion, if you're using a textured, textured material on a, on a refrigerator door that has texture, let that be the air release. Sure. Don't buy the air release product, save yourself 20 to 25 percent. So, so my business is basically, uh, I want to say 90% of it is what I do is I print, ship, and the customers install it. I'm trying to make it as easy. Ooh, all right. Now you just defined another aspect. <laughs> I'm trying to make, and I'm, I'm, I'm making it as easy as possible for the customer. You have to. Install. You're doing yes. the right thing now. Yes. Okay. So I'm yeah. doing the right thing. Yeah. You just changed the whole perspective of those four questions. Yes. Right? right. Because now you're not doing the install. No. Yeah, you gave me information. Now I can answer. What you're okay, y'all. I'm, I'm just trying to pick your brain. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind my brain being picked. Yeah, it's just it's just a little niche market. The thing is, I don't know everything, too. but this guy does. So I got him backing me up. <laughs> I don't want you all to think I'm cocky about this cost an issue. Uh, so far, no, not yet. <coughs> I think the Are you laminating it then? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think the, the, the easiest product digital print that a consumer could put on is their thirty nine eighty one product. Yeah, thirty nine. Yeah, but I think he's going to price himself out of the market. Might be. I'm just asking you if price is an issue. Oh well, um, the average refrigerator for the for the custom design ones are around two hundred dollars. Well, wait. He could even use thirty one seventy four, but again. Inside the first two pages of the new digital guide is the product we're talking about. He's, a, he's referring to the new non-PVC products now, the green. Well, I was going to ask you that. Okay. You These are the two big things that's hot now. It's very interesting. We had 3174 that's listed in there like eight years ago, six years ago, whatever it was. Never sold it. Right? Then the economy crashed in 2008, 2009, and nobody, we didn't sell one roll the next couple of years. Also, the economy comes back in 2011, 2012, when people are going, oh, you got a green product? We're like, yeah, we got one, and you know, and all of a sudden sales started happening. So it's like when the economy came back, then everyone got green conscious again, they could spend more money. So then, nobody cares about the earth when the, when the economy's back. <laughs> yeah, that's about, that's, that's about the footnote on the whole thing. It's like, I'm worried about me now, forget the earth, you know? And so then we introduced 3981, which is, uh, the vehicle wrap material or something for you know non strain side applications. So you got 3174 with the 236 laminate, and then you got 3981 with the 289 laminate. Okay, so for laminates, I've been using uh, uh, 210. Or I mean, uh, uh, yeah, 210 for yeah. the doors and refrigerators. Yeah, as long as there's not movement on it, it's. It's it's gonna work. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, it's your application is unique where that would work. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Okay. Yeah. And, and of course, when my business grows, I still do every once in a while. I do vehicle wraps. Well, then go to two ninety three. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. But um, or even two fifteen would work. I mean, if you get into a point where you've got a nice corporate contract, sort of an image contract job uh -huh. where you're doing multiples and you want to really make it a little bit more durable, I would I would go to the 215 in that case. But you're you're okay with 210. I, I honestly think with what I've heard from what you're saying that the 3551 product and the 210 is the right product for me. Okay. Yeah. I, I would just no, be only, no RA though. No. Really? Well he doesn't need it but I mean unless it's a flat door like that. Well but, but he's not doing the install. I, I'm not doing the install. I'm trying to make it matter. Well, RA is not going to make it any easier to put on. 
Wait, the only reason I just say against it is I'd be afraid that he does sends one out with not RA on it and then one of his installers don't, you know, freaks out and burns but the, the whole level is job. the same on both. I understand, but everyone's getting so reliable on that yeah. RA crutch these days. Right. So you're all, we're, we're having this discussion in front of you because this is a great example of where you can get. Right? This man started installing graphics and vehicle wraps back when you had to put an overhead projector and draw on the vinyl, on plotter vinyl, back in the 80s, and draw it out and then cut it out and put it on a car. No, there was no... Went way back further than that, it was screen printing products. Back I, was to give you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get all technical in Asia. <laughs> so I think, okay, so okay. that's like that's when partial started and all this stuff. It, there was no there was industrial film. It yeah. was all, oh, yeah, yeah. It was all just permanent adhesive. You got one, one shot, one shot out of it. Yeah. Right. All these other technologies came about to make it easier for more people to use the product. Well, it's sort of, you know, it's a little bit of a crutch. It works, don't get me wrong. But you have guys like this that have been around for so years that, you know, you talk about as much as he goes through or as much vinyl you go through. Right. And you can save 20 to 25 percent on your media cost by buying 3551 without the IRA or 3951 without Jerry, and you can install it. You save a lot of money. That money's going in the pocket. That's what we want to make you guys. Well, that's successful. what professional installers come in. Well, you're not a professional installer? No, I'm talking about that. You know, yes, but, but again, for an average person you you're know, already, like my business. You're already selling the product to uh -huh. consumers. Yes. That the only difference between the two is there's an air channel in one and not in the other. What I'm saying to you is there's enough texture in that refrigerator door mm -hmm. that you do not need that air address pattern in there. The air will flow. Okay. Out through those by the texture. He might just be a little. Get a little. Get into it. Yeah. I'll try it. Just a little. You can tell I get into it. Twenty percent on the film. Yeah. But these are great questions. I just don't think you ever know about a refrigerator because mine's smooth at home. Right. See, that's the only thing. If he goes to that, and then the guy, and then the guy steals. Oh, stay still. Yeah. 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 But that's the only thing. The wild card is that he sends it to the guy. Then he's going to have problems with it. Would definitely do the R F. Yeah. So, no, but this is this is great conversation stuff because this is backed up about all the four or five slides before this of why we make different products for different applications. Right, right, right. And engineer so much different stuff. Right. Finding that right product for the right application, just believe me, it's the solution. Now, I, you know, we know. And listen, just make a comment. You got a business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get paid for what you do. Right. You install some stuff yourself. Yeah. You're a professional. Oh yeah. Don't ever, yeah. don't ever underestimate yourself on that. Just because somebody's got PDAA or the 3M thing on their deal because they took the class and got certified, you're still as much professional as he is. You're getting paid for what you do. Don't underestimate what you guys do. Right? That's your life. This is, you know, this is what I do every day. Talk about my product and my company. You guys talk about your products and your company. And if you're an installer just here and you don't own the company, you're even more of a professional, whether you want to say so or not. Because you now are taking this class that we're going to certify you for this. We're going to give you a completion of certification. But you're basically above 60, 70% of people out there that haven't been trained in a class. Haven't had the guidance of this man. I'm not even going to say me, because no, that's not that I ain't think of the deal. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Is there a difference between the three options on like expanding and contracting? Um, what, the vinyl? Yeah, like, yeah. like in high or low temperatures. Yeah, you've got, and the cast is going to be a little bit more consistent. Of course, with temperature ranges, obviously everything's going to expand and contract. And, sort of minute areas, but you know, calendar, you're stressing it more, so you have, it's more vulnerable. Ultra calendar, a little less, but it's still calendar, don't forget that, right? And then of course the cast is gonna be the one that's gonna perform better over the course of time, so those contractions and, 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 the, and the UV environment, basically is what you're saying. All right, so here's a good idea of our rapid cast films. The 3551, we call it command form, so when it doesn't have RA, it's a command form product. 
Today got below at 3551 RA with the rapid air technology. Perfect example. Trailer. I mean, him and I went down to the, who was it? Duke or uh, Great Dane? When we went down years ago and wrapped that trailer for him with our stuff? Mm -hmm. With reflective on the back of the utility. Or utility trailer, yeah. So, then in the wraps, our 3751 is what we introduced probably three years ago now, I guess. Only comes with RA, you can't get that without it, but that's more, what we did there was modify the adhesive. Our 3951 is the top of the line, but everyone, oh, it's too tacky on initial tag. All these guys who use 3M, IJ180 before, they're like, we can't use it. You know, it's too much initial tag, it ruins my habits, I can't get it. So we said, okay, we'll make you a product that performs with the adhesive on the initial tag like that. So that's how 3751. Yeah, if, if you're having a problem with the initial tack, can't you do just uh, like light mist of water or something to kind of help you on that? No. No, no you don't. Know. <laughs> no. That's the normal street stuff. But the, you know, <laughs> I'm answering your question. It is a good question, and I'm glad he asked it. But the answer is very solid. No, we don't want anything going on between that material and that and that glue. No, the rest of the manufacturers do either. Okay. Please do not use water soap. Application fluid, none of that stuff. But so I mean, you can use all that stuff with 3M R on Avery that day. Was <laughs> <Just Another sure. laughs> so that just for car wraps? For everything. Great question. For everything. Like, so you don't want to use wrap attack on a no. sign? No. Here's what happens when you introduce some, any kind of a chemical of any sort between the adhesive and the substrate is you're not going to get the adhesion out of what they formulated to stick to the substrate. You're going to have a product in between that. For instance, when we talk about prepping cars, and we will in this class, we don't want to have anything left on that car that the adhesive is going to stick to, like cleaning products, tire dressing, wax, Things of that nature. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even like the 651, I guess, mm -hmm. just no RA or nothing in it. Mm -hmm. it big spot. You know, it's really hard to apply. Mm -hmm. Why is it hard to apply? Without any bubbles or anything? This is. Well, have you ever seen a bubble after a few days? No. What happens to it? Mm -hmm. It goes away. That's sure. Sure. But that's why we have you here to teach you practical application tips so you don't get bubbles. So you learn how to put stuff on without getting wrinkles and bubbles and things of that nature. So hopefully you'll... Yeah, we, and listen, we, you know, I'm saying no and we know where everybody, where a lot of people do it. So the thing is you just have to remember is you're compromising the integrity of the product. If there's some type of liquid in there, between the glue and the, and the substrate it's being attached to. And you think you get it all out, and I guarantee you we can prove you don't, but you're just leaving something in there that will eventually you know, compromise it. You know, and I can't even say, it could be a million things that could happen. You know, But in his instance, if it's an outdoor graphic, like you said, and it is big, and you go back in a couple days and the bubbles aren't there that were, might have been there, I call them champagne bubbles. You probably see them when you're squeegeeing stuff on. But then all of a sudden the UV and the sun hits it for a couple hours, for a couple of days. And that goes through what we call out the wetting out period. The vinyl becomes the, the you know, the UV softens the, the vinyl, mm -hmm. softens the glue, the glue starts to sort of melt out, wet out, mm -hmm. or pulls the vinyl with that. That's why those bubbles, those little champagne bubbles go away. Manufacturers have ways of, of analyzing film if you have a failure you have to usually send back a swatch of the film. And they have a way of analyzing it where they can tell if something's on the adhesive that's contaminating it from sticking. 99% of the time, it's an installation failure. I can almost guarantee it. That's what they're going to tell you. But it is. <laughs> you know, it, that, that's, my, that's the hardest part of my job, I'll be honest with you. Is Telling someone after we've proven and we know something was done that compromised the material, mm -hmm. whether it be using the wrong profile, be use rapid tech to install it, you know, use the wrong product, you know, whatever. 
we can we can determine all that. That's the hardest part is to go back because you guys are stuck in your trenches and I understand your position. Let me, let me give you a really, I've been doing it for 10 years. Let me give you a really good reference. Who installs reflective material with application fluid or soap and water because it's so aggressive? Does anybody here do that? Does anybody here work with reflective material? I work with high, uh, the high intensity reflective, yeah, for yeah. highway signs. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't spray or do anything before you installed that? No, I had used a machine called the uh, Highway Handyman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you basically just the lay it out on your substrate and then you drop the roller, flip it over, remove the backing, yeah. and then roll it. Okay. Then roll it. Okay. So what happens to um, reflective material when you introduce any kind of fluid to it? <clears throat> Is it rusts? It grows on the vehicle because it's got metal particles mm -hmm. in it. For the re reflectivity. Okay. So when you introduce any kind of fluid to it, it starts to corrode. All right. So kind of follow me down the road with corrosion and mm -hmm. you know where that goes. It yeah. goes no. It can go. In, it can actually eat into the paint. Yeah. So Which is a great transition point to the 5650. That's why we put the RA on our original 5600 series when we had to rename it just so because we had to carry both colors of both with the RA and without. So the 5600 series is without RA, and then the 5650 is the RA. So, you know, we have that in white. It's a printable, solvent printable reflective. Um, and I tell you, right there is a great example of it. A pizza delivery truck or a restaurant delivery truck. Um, think about, you know, when the guy comes in and you're just doing the cut vinyl on the van or the pickup truck, $400 job, $500 job, whatever you charge for it. Now, suggest to the guy, hey, how about wrapping the freaking back doors of the van and reflective? Now you got 24 hour exposure for your business. And a guy pulls up behind that van with the headlights on, it's like illuminated billboards staring him in the face. You want advertising? Sell somebody reflective. They get 24 hour exposure. Same thing for the has anybody tried that yeah, product here? Let's use other products for reflective. Get rid of the mail phone. Um, so, what happens to a reflective film when you go to lift it if you had to reposition it? <coughs> it, it comes tears. apart. You break. It, it comes break apart it. on you. You break it, it tears. Well, either that or it fractures. You'll see okay, yeah. funky lines mm -hmm. going through it. That material won't, and I know it won't because when they first introduced that, I used it at a trade show on a pickup truck tailgate. There you go. One piece, and I took it on and off that truck probably 50 times during the show, and by the last time I put it on, you could never tell that that thing had been taken off and put back on again. It looked like brand new. Now, it would craze. But you take a heat gun to it with a laminate on it, and uh -huh. the craze would go up. Okay. It's pretty cool stuff. You just didn't fracture it like he was talking. Mm -hmm. You were just crazing it. Totally you were repositional. That honey totally repositional, shape. too. You can, lift, you can squeeze it down and lift it right back up again. So, like on our truck out there, I mean, yeah. it would be kind of cool to print part of it reflective. It'd be really cool. It'd be really cool. Don't do all of it, because it, it tends to drown it out, yeah. have the background, um, just regular, and then the prominent, what you want to advertise and reflective, it really pops. I mean, always, yeah, always think of accent, using accent for reflective. Emphasis and accent stuff, like the tailgates and the doors. You don't need to do the whole sides and all that. But if there's something you want to pop, like a well, website address or a phone number, yeah, put that ramp on, then plot or cut out reflective and put it in there. So you or overlay it. On the 5650, or I think I have a big roll of the 3M stuff. That you know, that won't shop. work, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just print it and laminate over the top of it. Yeah. yeah. Is it printable or reflective? I guess, I don't know. Well, <laughs> don't guess, you yeah. don't know. Is it 680 series? Check and see if it's a 680 series. Or 580. That 580. So we'll go if it's 680. Well, 680 is their most is expensive there, product. Is there, is there it's printable, repositional and removable. Printable it's, it's equivalent to the 5600 of Port of Falls. All right, let's talk about 3M. Okay. But it's probably, <laughs> it's probably twice as much as the Orifal product. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I Who's your have... sales guy at regional so I can talk to him? Well, it's Rob. Yeah. I know. It's, we just bought some machines <laughs> okay. and it came with it. I got, oh, yeah. So we got a thousand dollar roll. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is. Yeah. We'll take three more questions during lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. And then uh, the 3951, 3951 RA, that's sort of our high end. That's the one I was talking about. It has a little bit more initial tap level than the 3751 and some other competitive products out there. Laminates that are used in the media for vehicle wraps, the 290 is our two mil, right? You can get that gloss or matte if you have that preference or your customer has a preference. 290F, if you ever see a laminate code with the F in it, sometimes it's GF, so it's gloss F. That means it's optically clear. So 290 GF would be what I would use for my perf if I'm doing the back window of a pickup truck with perf and I'm gonna laminate that. I want to use 290 GF. It's optically clear. If I use just the regular 290, it'll be all haze. I won't, you know, I won't have the true vision through that that perk. And you can use them both on the 290. You can use the 290F on the 290 or the 951. The 3951? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they interchange with all of our media. But if you're doing a fair amount of window perf graphics, then just buy one laminate and Not use the 290 laminate. GF. When you're doing the vehicle wrap stuff, there's no reason to have two hands. That's what's kind of money for it. You're paying about a cent and a half per square foot more for the GF, but what's the matter? You don't have to inventory the other product, right? Then, right? Yeah. The other good thing is, you know, you put an optically clear, optically clear laminate on your vehicle wrap. You're gonna, your colors are gonna pop. Believe me, there's a difference. This man back here can verify it, Mr. Darrell. Yes. You got it on your Camry, right? <clears throat> yeah, the Camry out there with the Autobot on the windows is actually that GF uh, over laminate. So when you walk by the Camry, yeah. and look at my my neat my, my son's neat Autobot on the windows. It'll be over laminated with the GF. Cool. So specifically the 290. So 293 is the one mil cast laminate, and that is not available in the in the F series. Out people clear. And then 297 is really taking a step up. Price-wise, you want to talk top of the end quality, and that is available in the optically clear. Um, it's just superior made with the raw materials. That's just why the price is so high. But you want quality, top of the line. Yeah, that 297 laminate is really, really good. Hey, Gary, why would we use 293 over, say, 290? Um, really 293, we mentioned it for the two real reasons, and that would be on the left of this page and the right of this page. 3551, 5650. All right, 3551 RA is 2.75 mil thick media. If I put a one mil to 293, we're getting close to that four mil, that comfort zone for you guys, right? So that's the reason we like to see it on that. And the 5650 RA is actually a five mil reflective. Now I don't want to thicken it up too much with reflective because it's tough to deal with, right, install anyways. So 293 on top of that gives me a six mil total finished package. Every other manufacturer, their media starts at six mil. So now we got a complete product for six mil. We're much more conformal, especially for doing those tailgate wraps and the back doors and vans. That's sort of the philosophy about it. Excellent, thank you. All right, wait, you getting there? Not quite. Quite. Where would you use oh, no. that product? Ah, uh, good point. Are you asking me or the class? I'm asking you. No. I would what use rabbit that. Tack. <coughs> with no, with no <laughs> rapid tack. <laughs> Listen to him over there. Use it with rapid tack. You hear him? I was kidding. Around. <laughs> I caught it. How about, how about that? Yeah. See that? Oh, wow. So you'd use that for a boat? Yes, sir. Not the nine three nine five one. Yeah, that's RA. what I'm talking about. No. Not the RA. No. Not the RA, wow. Not IJ-180C. I got a Is boat it? coming up next week, so it's good. Air out, water in. There you go. Thank you, Bob. How long would it, does a boat wrap last a year or two? Oh. What? Probably more than anything else would. Uh, really? Yeah. Wait, well, does a ton of them because it's like forty percent of the business. Most of people who own boats like that, they keep them indoors, so they don't get the exposure all the time. Ah, true. If that thing sits outside, and it, remember, it's all vertical. 
right. as your so you're going to get at least five to six out of it. You've got the air channels popping the air out. Most but people you're have some areas that aren't going to be seen the garage, so then you could possibly let it water. I've it. got one that's over 10 years old. That's why they go to 51 years with a command form. Why don't they have it water down? But that's all weighing just about weighing uses. I mean, I don't have that bulk. Water's not going to hurt it. Water's not going to hurt it. You can. I've got people that Unless you give it a chance to hurt it with your Gazi air egress technology. Well, about the water coming underneath for the boats and such. I don't know. Is it pretty sticky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never, I never tried it. I was just curious. I mean, it's same thing. It's got candles. It's actually the same thing. Just never collapsed. Trust us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. We use like I love the question. Two ninety three to go around. You don't have to worry about. And that will help seal things a little bit. Primer ninety four. Really? Like the lamp? No, no, no. Yeah, they'll do like a half inch or something like that. Yeah. And they'll do okay. half over the vinyl, half Same over the boat, just kind of seal no things. No edge sealer. But you're no still going to you don't use it. So you guys don't like use uh, Primer 94? Yeah. And so no, it's tough. and you better not so eat us, because it will actually destroy, destroy our adhesive. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the plot. No, yes. Remember those first couple slides I was talking about? No, it's a little harder what we put in manufacturing the product? Yeah. That's the result. That's why you don't need edge seal. That's why you don't need Primer 94. You don't need any of that crap. That's okay. the learning curve of this media. <laughs> That's why we had it here. It's like, you put it in the other way. Right, right, right. Once you put it on, you never have to worry about it. Yeah. Hey, good enough. What are we talking about? I forgot. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I was talking to him. Bob right. was interrupting the players again. The adhesive strength on Aura Falls product is going to be totally different than what you're used to if you use Avery or 3M or any of the other manufacturers, except for maybe Arlon. It's going to be more initial tack, so it's going to be a little bit harder to put on initially. But you don't have to worry about longevity out of it. It's going to stay down. I'm not going to pull up. As long as you do prep work correctly. You don't have to use primers on it. You don't have to use an edge sealer on it. That stuff is just not needed at all. So look, it might take you a little bit more time to install this media. But if you put all the rest of the stuff into the equation that the other manufacturers want you to be used product-wise, right. it takes you about the same equivalent amount of time. Putting the primer on, putting the edge sealer on, doing all that you stuff. You're talking about prepping. Yeah. And then once you build that habit of not using all that other stuff, uh -huh. that it actually will become more cost-efficient for you to do it that way. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. That's because you'd be creating new habits. Yeah. Listen, we understand the biggest thing with all you guys and followers that have used other products and all that stuff is you created all these habits. Well, thank you for coming to the class because we're going to break some of those habits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had people hating us at the end of the first day. We don't do it intentionally. We just want to teach you the way that works best with our product. Okay? So, if you don't like me, then don't say goodbye and see you just, tomorrow. Just Gary, he grows on you after a while. <laughs> I've only got two days to grow on them. Huh? <laughs> All right, so the other part about choosing the correct media, the biggest factor, one of the, well, not the biggest, but one of the big things. Please use with all those different materials. I get it, it's a pain in the butt. You gotta drop, download that profile, but use the right profile for the material. We spend a half a million dollars a year on profiles. x right writes our freaking profiles with us and accordingly with our tech support guys. It's a big deal to us because we've engineered the coating and the media and the adhesive to work with that. Okay? <laughs> so it's very easy on our website. You see a... Now, make sure for our website, orafallamericas.com. If you go to orafall.com, you're going to go to the German website. Still has all the stuff there, but it has stuff they sell in Europe that you can't get here. And then you guys call me up and say, I want that product. No, go to orafallamericas.com, okay? Support, you'll see it. Boom, if you put the cursor over that, the first thing is ICC profiles. You click on that, it's going to ask you what machine do you have, what ink center you're using, and what rip you're using. You answer each one of those questions, boom, the page comes up with all the materials for your setup. Okay. Nice and easy. You download it right from there in your room. Does everybody know what that is? It's a software, right? The RIP? The RIP is a software. Yeah. Right. That's where you put the ICC profile. But right. Does everybody know what the ICC profile does? What's it do? It, no. Good. I'm sorry, I was making an assumption there. So you have a printer, and 
you have the software to run it. Right. The ICC profile tells the printer how to run that media. It tells it the speed, the heat levels, the, the uh, density of ink that it lays yeah. down. Yeah. That whole thing is done. So if you're using a generic ICC profile, meaning you pull your window down, your RIP software, and it says cast <laughs> calendar material, and you just choose one of those, you're going to get just a generic type of ICC profile where you might be dumping a whole lot more ink down on it. You might be getting speeds that are not correct where you get banding. Mm -hmm. You've seen that, right? Yeah. That's all related to the ICC profile. Okay. That's the speed how it goes through. It's the heat levels of those heaters, post and preheat on both sides. So it really behooves you to, to do the right ones. And each media has its own ICC profile. And each manufacturer has their own ICC profiles. Don't use 3M on Oracle or Oracle on 3M. It just, it's not appropriate. Well, the, the original supply, when they came over, I think they downloaded some like, software about that. Yeah, but they don't know what you're using day by day by day in your office. So that was just to get you started. Right, right. But since okay. I bought the printer, I, like I said, I use probably 90% of your product. Right. So I think they, but I you're think using, they set them up. Well, you're, you're using different products, though. We have different profiles for different, different pro products. Product. You can't use a 3551 product with 3650. Listen, I got an, I'll give you an example. I got an issue up in Logan. A guy was convinced that 290 and 3951 for these straight signs, because it's the best material, was going to work the best. Right. And then he prints it with 3651 profile. He dumped so much extra ink. Calendar product <coughs> profile on a cast media. You don't, I mean, first off, I guarantee you, if you're using generic profiles and you switch to ours, you're going to use, you'll see a noticeable difference in the amount of ink used. Because our material requires less ink the way that we manufacture the product to create the graphic. He's dumping a calendar set of ink onto a cast and it was burning up. Right? The other thing he was laminating too quickly too, but here nor there. So he's getting all these burned signs look, right? Well, a lot of it was white background where he trapped in the solvents. He didn't let them outgas too much ink. But he had all these little nice little brown ridges around his, you know, burned images around his graphic. Okay, so I have but Go ahead. Well, I, I've had a lot of problems just last week. I mean, will the ICC profiles fix this? The grays look green. I can't get a good deep black. And what kind of machine do you have? I, it's a Muto. Four color or six color? It's four color. That's your problem. Oh, I got selling Muto? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening is when you put the lamb on top of it, uh -huh. the lamb has a UV inhibitor that changes the color. It'll change it to green. Depending on the... the Every manufacturer's, manufacturer's laminate changes some your... Purple, purple some changes your green. Color. So what you have some to do yellow. is yeah. to correct that, you have to trick it. You have to add magenta to the to the color of black. So when the lamb goes over it, it's not going to be gray. So we're just adding a little bit of magenta in the slider. I mean, the I, I'm, well, I'm, not a, black. I'm not a color guy, but there are ways of tricking the colors so where when you put the lamb on top of it, it, it doesn't come out green or gray or... What was the issue that we had with that one customer? It went from, it went from uh, beige to green, wasn't it? The, the one other thing on black is, are you using just one color black or no. four color black? You know, it looks okay. like so four color black. I can't can. really tell, you know. Okay. Yeah, because right. so you guys are... If you really want a true black, you're going to change all those colors to black. Okay. Uh, change all the colors for about five minutes. And then, we'll have to uh, talk about this later. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'll have to call my office and, and sure. talk to my, my guy there. He knows more about that. But okay. Uh, yeah. There's a way of tricking uh, the about color the color minutes. process. I think you have to change each color to 100% to get the true black. But I'm, I'm, I'll find out about that. Yeah, I don't know. We'd have to talk to our yeah, guys and try that. And color guys to really figure out exactly. Yeah. But every every manufactured laminate will shift the color, just so you guys know. Okay. But those blacks are hard, difficult, like the black gradient, grays and blacks. Yes, when uh, you put that lamb on there, and you're going to get green, and you're going to get purple, and 
And the only way to, to trick that with a four color machine is to put some magenta in there. That, that's my experience with that's it. That's his experience. And you've got to really kind of play with it to figure out how much, 5%, 3%. Yeah, it's controllable. You can you can dictate it and create the controls to prevent it from I, I have a Roland and I do have one of the generic casts and one three prints green, the other one prints beautiful too, so. Wait, what's the Roland? What machine is that? Oh, uh, well, Versa. Oh, you have a rolled in. I thought and you had a rolled in. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's getting he's getting the variants of both. He's yeah. running VersaWorks yeah. on one, and what are you running for the rip on the other one? Uh, he's got Flexi on the other one. Yeah. So you do have a roll-in printer? Uh-huh. What is it? What model? It's a, uh, it's a 54 540? inch. 540? Yeah, the 540. Okay, and it's a six-color machine, right? Yes, but it's all, yeah, it's printing all. So you're going to get a speed. little bit better blacks out of that machine because of the six color okay. than the four color one. But there are, I'll find out some some uh, things for you on the color to, on the Muta to see if I can. I don't know if we've got, I don't know if we've got Aaron and Adam are here. I think they're on the top, but usually they're very helpful in this stuff. So when I get back to the office, I just go to that website and it goes, uh, you download something? Yeah. Or, yeah, you can download the profile. Like I said, it's going to ask you the printer. See this right here? Yeah. It's going to ask you. That's your printer, HP. Right. Or I don't know. Well, that's that's like. that's the original old version. Okay. So so that was they went to manufacture that printer, and then the and other then, ones after that, the ink type. And, and then I guess when you hit this configuration, it gives you the media rip information. Is that correct? No. That's what I say. That's sort of the older version. The one that is updated now, where it asks you the manufacturer okay. of the printer. Then you'll pick out what printer you have. Then it'll ask you uh, the your, rip that you're using. Software. And then it will ask you what ink set you're using. Of course, obviously we only have an OEM selection there, but you still click that. Once you click that, then it opens up the whole page. And then from mm -hmm. there, you see it. it. It has the listing of it'll say 3640 gloss. And then to the right, whether it be download or be highlight, you can just download it right from there. Ah, from okay. The right okay. Okay. And then you plug it into your RIP software. Yeah. All right. But the other thing too that leads to all of this is that first bullet point here. Can you guys, how many calibrate your printer regularly? How many people calibrate your monitor regularly? Right. Because if you're dealing with a client, you send something that's on your screen that you know is your red. And you send it to him, and his monitor's not calibrated or out of sync or a different manufacturer. He's going to see that, and that's not going to be that same red. That's not relative. Well, it is when we're talking about proof and stuff. Yeah, but that's okay. You can't you can't calibrate his monitor. So what's on? I understand, but you still have to calibrate yours to be true. Yeah. All right. The other thing that helps out is if you know you're printing a job. Put the material inside, usually in the environment of the printer room, right? So it can soften and sort of get acclimated to that, especially if you're storing stuff in a cooler environment. And of course, in the printer, it's going to be a little bit warm in that room if you have a designated room. Okay, so I have a latex. Still the same thing? Yeah, not necessarily. You still want to acclimate the media. Oh, wow. 24 hours? <clears throat> really? And the media needs to be acclimated to the room you're printing in. So yeah. it's just, you know, it's like, for instance, oh, so okay, so the roll. Yes. The, okay, okay. You put the roll in there. When you put wood plank flooring down, yeah, you have to put it in the room and speak for 24 hours to get acclimated. It's almost the same thing. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's that's all different. All right. Then of course choose the right ICC profile, and most importantly, from the manufacturer's perspective, please allow 24 hours for that solvent. If you have a solvent printer, or if you have a latex printer to let it out gas before you laminate. Because that's not defined yet if you have a latex, just so you know. I know they sold it on you can do it right away, right? Huh? They told you that, right? Yeah. Really? Okay. So I gotta wait, I gotta wait 24 hours for it. Listen. Well, so what happens if I don't? I mean, cause I, I well, don't we don't know yet. About a year. We don't know yet, because latex hasn't been out that long. I will tell you that when we do installations on interior walls, latex painted interior walls. Uh -huh. If those don't, if that hasn't set for two weeks, oh yeah, yeah. you got to put it on there. Yeah. It falls off. It bubbles up. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Well, but I'm, I'm okay. thinking, you're talking about printer. the same thing with your ink. You get a latex printer laying latex ink down on vinyl, and then you're going to trap it. 
Oh, I didn't even think about that before. What do you think is going to happen? The way it's built, it's, it's not quite the same. The, the latex, it's it's just a vehicle for the solvent to hit your, hit your medium. The video. So when the heat, or when, the, when it's heated, the theory is all the, the vehicle, that solution, is evaporated. That's their theory. That's the theory. But the theory, yeah. there is no evidence or proof. Thank you. And we're not, we're not, I'm not countering them. I'm not disputing them. No, I know, I know. The thing is that nothing is out there long enough to be able to say, yes, that works. And we're comfortable with it yet. Now, my experience, I'm going to give you the manufacturer's perspective. Okay, now I'm going to go over here, take off my orange gel shirt and tell you, here's the street glue. You know what, still let it out gas a little bit, just to be sure. Try to get four to six hours or eight hours if you can. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. You'll sleep better, and I'll sleep better, because the last thing I want you to do is call me up in two months and say, I laminated right away, and now it's coming off the car. And it's latex. I'm supposed to be able to laminate right away. And I'm telling you, remember the class when I told you we weren't comfortable with you? Well, no, I'm, I'm not worried. Well, I'm not, I'm not even worried about that, but I'm worried about it. So when I print it out, I go 10 minutes later, I laminate that thing. What, well, a bubble? We're... We don't so, know. We've I've seen everything happen with it already. Okay. Right? Okay. No, I, I'm just making you aware. I'm not. You do what you got to do. Well, I know. I, get I it? know. I know. You know. I'm just letting you know it's not all defined yet. We've seen everything happen with this deal. I'm just trying to get a game plan. So I'm, probably next time I want to start printing again, I might have a, a, a drying rack or something that I can just kind of. Anything you can get is going to help the process because you're still tramping stuff in there. No, you got your Alright, importance of laminating. Obviously, first off, gives some UV prolongation to the inks, right? To make them last longer. More importantly, especially for vehicle wraps, it's providing against abrasion and scuff resistance. I mean, I mean, listen, I you're going to do what you got to do, but I would never sell a vehicle wrap without laminating it. Well, first of all, it's going to be really hard to put on. Yeah, well, that's the next point. Is tissue. You try to put on a material that just has solvent inks into it, a two mil with a cast, and it's going to go like, mm -hmm. you know, it's got no, you got no consistency to it. It's got no strength to it. And obviously, you know, with a laminate, it increases the heat tolerance of the film. So when we're putting some heat on in the application to get into those tougher areas and let it relax and roll it in, right? It helps against melting, I'm melting. Um, and we've, we've watched people melt a uh, laminated vial, believe me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it, you know, you can decrease the vinyl inventory by using a different finish laminate. So, if you just want to print on gloss or you're one of these old printer guys that says, oh, it don't, you can only print on matte stuff because it looks better. Well, that's, you know, there I don't think it's valid anymore, but I'm not going to argue with somebody. But you want gloss, semi-gloss, or a matte finish, that's why we have all those laminates available with those different finishes. So, you can print on one media and then put on the laminate that you need for the job. Obviously, it's going to enhance the color in the image and make it pop a little bit, especially with the GF, that optically clear laminate we were talking about. Question. Yeah, I, sorry. Our old wrap guy, I mean, he's like a semi-gloss lamb on everything, and I kind of like gloss. I mean, does, does it hide more uh, imperfections? Gloss hides more? No, semi-gloss hides more oh. imperfections. I mean... What's your opinion on the customers, I, your opinion on that? Well, I think what you're talking about, and just recently, um, one of the other manufacturers only had lust, what they call luster finish. Right. They didn't have a gloss. Okay. So, um, that was one of my biggest beefs with them. And they took that in consideration and went back and formulated. I mean, Orifall and Avery were killing them in the industry with their gloss because okay. they had it and they it framed it. Right. Okay. So they finally came out with their own gloss. But um, my idea of a custom wrap would be either if a customer is looking for a matte, then he's going to say, I want a matte finish. If not, he wants a high gloss finish. And my idea of a custom wrap would be, you know, look like paint. Okay. 
That's what I'm looking for. I mean, the deep shine type of gloss is what I'm thinking that most customers are looking for, unless he specifically says to you, I want that. Right. Well, maybe that, I didn't know that. I would agree with that. Luster, luster, luster is just like, uh uh. That's what I can do. I mean, it's not like horrible, but it wasn't like I a mean, matte. You, you all have a luster finish, right? Yeah, it's our semi gloss. Semi gloss. But we have, yeah, we have gloss on that. I don't know how much you sell. Do you sell a lot of that? Uh, not for beautiful wraps. Well, I mean, but we saw give us an example. The interior graphics? Yeah, I just did a huge program in Vegas where it was all semi gloss for, you know, it was partial outdoor, partial indoor type of application stuff. Okay. But you know, it's it. You're right. It's not going to be the two are the most. It's more like you said. It's almost a special project deal. Yeah, okay. Probably only eighty percent of what we sell is uh, for wrap kits overall is eighty to eighty five percent making this gloss. Yeah. With everything else making up the fifteen percent. Okay. And what's really become pretty cool in in, in my kind of area is the combination of two together. Combination of some gloss and some matte overlays on top of it. It <coughs> just pulls out depth mm -hmm. in the vehicle wrap. Gives it a three dimensional look. Gives it some dimension to it. Same thing with the really reflective overlays and stuff like that. Really <coughs> creative with it. Okay. So, yeah, it's obviously, you know, we talked about the 290, the 290F, the 293 that's listed on that bottom. Now, the 290F would be a product that I would stock almost all the time instead of having 290 and 290F. The 290F is supposedly optically clear for windows, but you can also use it on the body film. Mm -hmm. So just stocking one roll, then if you have a couple of guys in your shop and they're doing the laminating and one guy goes in there and he pulls off 290 for window film and you put it on there and you can't see through it, it's just like, okay, you just screwed that hole piece of graphic up, you're going to have to go back and reprint it. Versus having a 290F sitting there instead of 290, then nobody makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the difference in the 290 and the 290F if you have, if they haven't, if you've experienced the product before, the 290 is on a paper liner, the 290 GF or any optically clear product is on a synthetic liner, a clear sort of plastic looking liner. That's how you get the optically clear, the way the glue the the, uh, the synthetic liner is much smoother, and the way that we apply the glue onto that before we apply, you know, the vinyl to it in the production process, gives the chance for the glue to totally thin out or wet out, if you will. And it just costs a little bit more, right? It's very, yeah. very, very, very okay. Like so what's the point? Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it's a, a penny and a half a square paper foot. And a synthetic liner. That's all. They're passing that along to you. Yeah. It's very minimal. Yeah, it's very good. You can check with these guys here and get a price to, to price it out for yourself so you can see the difference. 